I'm João from Koi Big Red Knives. I know it's hard, but you can call me John, okay? Uh, so I'm here to give you an introduction to wet stones today. So, you know, a long time with practice, you will make easier for you to make your sharpening yourself and to maintain your knives. And especially because they are your treasured possessions. So we want to take you to the next level. So let's go together today. So we are bringing for you a set of wet stones, which goes from the coarse grit to 40, to 1000 and 6000 which is a polishing process starting here and we also have a kangaroo leather strop which is a step beyond what on what you need for you okay so i'm gonna demonstrate now how the grits work because you're going to the coarse grit to the finer grit and to the polishment process you gotta understand how it's gonna work in your blade. So here I have a 240 grit sandpaper, and this is a timber with some black paint. So just to demonstrate to you how it's gonna work. So, you can see the grooves. So that's what the wet stone is going to do with your blade. So, it's a kind of a meticulous process, but you'll have a lot of fun doing it yourself. Because what usually happens when you take your knives for somebody out there to do your sharpening, they're gonna do it freehand and dry sharpening in a high rotation, heating up the blade, and that's all that you don't need to happen with your knife, right? because you're not spending $300, $400 for a marvelous knife and you're gonna give it somebody that is not gonna take as much care as you do, right? So let's do it the right way. So this is the 240 grit and now I have 1000 grit, which are starting the polishing process, right? The same black surface. You can see the difference. So I can see the timber at the back there and here it is slightly sanded so it's a more smooth process and then we go progressively through the stones. So now I'm gonna make a little test for you. I'm gonna show you a very sharp knife and a dull knife. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how a very sharp knife works cutting the paper in a dull knife. How does it go? So this is a Giotto knife, coin knives, 15 degrees, very polished and mirrored edge effect. So let's see how it goes. Maybe I can barely hear the noise of the paper being cut. So that's the effect and that's the result you want for your knives. So let's check the dull one now. You see, it's, it is stuck straight away. So it's tearing the paper apart. So that's the, that's the moment you start thinking about like now I need some sharpening so then the wet stones come in place so let's go to the technique when you talk about sharpening many people wrongly will take this tool which is a big mistake you're not doing any sharpening with this, you know? Gordon Ramsay was just a kitchen hand before he knew it. So don't think it's a good thing. Like you have very particular ways to use the honing rod. 
So we're gonna go through it later on, maybe in another video. But what I wanna show you now, it's like how you're gonna start your sharpening. You're gonna take your wet stones to 40 degrees, to 40 degrees, sorry. And you're gonna soak them in water for 15, 20 minutes. Like I done it before. I had them soak here. So, and then what's the specs of your knives? If you have Western knives, they have softer steel and it takes longer to sharpen them because when you're grinding the soft steel, it starts to accumulate and it's very hard for you to take it apart from the bevel. So it takes a bit longer than the Japanese knives, which is harder steel. And with harder steel abrasion against the wet stone, you can grind more steel. And it's like, I wouldn't say it's easier because you can grind more than you need in a short space of time. So you gotta be careful and that's when we start to do it, right? Uh, you soak in your knives, you identify you have a Japanese knife or a koi knife from us. So what you're gonna do? Take your knife, you're checking the bevel, you're feeling the burr. One way I do to check if there are little fractures in a bevel. It's, I know it's a bit cringeworthy, but you be careful if you're gonna do it. I just slide the blade in my fingernail so I can feel every single dent. Even, I can feel even if I can't see them because they are microscopic, little dents. So this is the dull knife. I can feel everything and it's not sharp at all. Most of multi-purpose knives, they have the angle sharpened 14 degrees or 15 degrees, sometimes maybe above. But let's keep it 14 and 15, it'll make it easier for you. And then you might be asking, how do I know if my bevel is 14 or 15 degrees? So you can see the bevel here. What you are gonna do? You're gonna start in a 240, which is the lower grip. You're gonna, your, your right hand will control the angle. So you're gonna follow the original one, ideally, right? So, give a little pressure with your left hand, half fingertip in a bevel, half in a whetstone, and you slightly drag backwards, and you won't feel any gap. If you're feeling a little gap, or if you're feeling a pressure from the blade towards your fingertip, you gotta put it a bit down. So lower a bit, and say, okay, I found it because I'm not feeling the gap anymore. So you're, you're following the original bevel now. So then you can start to do your, your sharpening. So is there another way to do it? Yes, there are. The way I do might sound a bit more complicated, but you know, when you want to take to the next level, you gotta do some little calculations. Let's keep in mind we have a 90 degrees, half of 90 is 45, and half of 45 is 22.5. Half of 22.5 is 1125, so we'll be slightly above 1125, you're gonna get 14 to 15. If you do this little calculation, pretty basic, 
So you will get used to it. And associated with this fingertip test, you'll be pretty close to the accuracy you want, okay? As I previously, previously said, uh, your right hand will keep the angle and your left hand will put some pressure on the blade. So you need some pressure. And this pressure might be in between five and six pounds or, you know, 2.6 to 3 kilos, which is, it's a good amount of pressure. So something, you can use the scale to get to that good pressure you know otherwise you're not gonna grind enough and you not you won't be satisfied at the end so this said let's go to the process okay 240 degree keep a little bit of water aside it's just a little bit because the stone is already soaked so water in there Beautiful. That little pressure. I will start with the back and forth technique. Just remember the amount of strikes you do in one section. It gotta be the same for all the sections you're doing, right? I got to the right angle. You release onwards, pressure backwards. Release onwards pressure backwards, release onwards, pressure backwards, three strikes, next section, release onwards, little bit of burr, let's keep going, beautiful, the burr, it's all over, so it means it's time for you to sweep sides. Can feel a bit dry, a bit more water. You can see here that we have some remains of steel with a bit of wet stone. This compound is gonna help in a sharpening so don't clean it okay so now I'm gonna show you the different technique which is the sweeping technique which you're gonna slide the blade across the wet stone in a full length in one strike so keep the angle with the right hand and here we go Just remember spreading the compound. I can feel slightly. Let's keep going. Yeah, let's. Well, I can see the bevel is going all along both sides. And I can feel the burr, which means that we can start with a higher grit, which is 1,000. Again, we can see the compound here. Spread it all over. Cool.
cool. I can feel the burr now. We can sweep sides. I can feel the burr. So now we're gonna do one each side because from now on we are taking the excess, taking the burr out, and then we're gonna refine the polishing process. One side, the other one, one side, again, and so on. I can feel way better now. Woo! That's what I want. So, I can feel the burr is very thin. If you would look through the microscope, you would see that the burr is folded to the left side. Now, it shows me that I can start the refine. To make it clear, before I start the polishment process, what, we are, what are we doing here? When you take the coarse grit, you're striking one side, and then you will feel a very coarse burr, like a line along your bevel pretty coarse you will feel it and then what you're doing you're just folding the burr till you get to the even bevel all the way right when you use the thousand grit the burr will be reduced so will slightly fold sideways you will feel the difference in this process and then when we start with the 6000 you're not taking steel off you're just evening these little grooves or the beard or the burr you're just evening it up and giving that mirror effect that you want for your knife so Let's start doing it now. A bit of water. Spread it out. Angles, angles, and angles, right? along the whole process if you don't if you don't have that confidence i have a card in a sleeve for you which is gonna make it easier i use a clamp you can find it very cheap this i got from japan and it keeps your multi-purpose angle 14 15 degrees and it's very easy to use it so i'll do a demonstration here you clamp in your knife like that and then you slide it up So when you get to this point, what you have to do? You have to keep it straight accordingly to the spine. So you check, you do a balance 
like a parallel line from the tip to the end of the bevel and then you make it parallel to the clamp they have the instructions in a box it's not gonna be a big deal for you to do it and then you will keep the angle all the way however the best method for you to use the clamps is the back and forth because when you go sweeping you can use it as well but you gotta get used to it the sweeping method you're gonna put the clamp out so if you're you know familiar if you're not familiar with this the clamp is gonna go into the edge of your whetstone and it will make you upset so you use the back and forth method and you'll be all right with this so keep that in mind the clamp is a good thing to do if you're not so confident so let's keep going then if you're gonna use this strop now I can feel the knife sharp. Still a bit of burr here at the end, as we can see. But it's better than it was before. We can finish with the leather strop. I put some pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical neutral oil and soak the leather all the way it's gonna make our strop last longer protect that so after you soak your strop I use a metal polisher compound all along. At this point, you're not taking any steel off. You're there just polishing. This compound is very cheap. You can find it anywhere. And then you. Just be careful, it's very slippery. Protect your hands. We're about to finish. As more you do it, it's more mirror effect you're gonna get. I can feel it even the whole way sliding smoothly and yeah and the secret of everything is the practice the more you practice you're gonna master it so we'll take less time and you'll be satisfied with the results or your knife keeping it like maintenance and you know that's the way to go we are knife lovers better than it was right thank you everyone I would like to invite you to follow us, Koi Knives and Big Red Knives, on social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and keep on going with your sharpening. We have these beautiful wet stones in our website, so I'm pretty sure you'll master it. Thank you.